Thank you for visiting this video segment of Dr. Afib. I'm Dr. Morales. Today we're going to be talking about exercise and atrial fibrillation. Last, in my last video segment I talked about obesity and weight loss and how weight loss is such an important feature for managing somebody's atrial fibrillation. But how do you give somebody advice for exercise so they can lose that weight for patients who have atrial fibrillation? When patients are first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, I often find people in my office who get told by other doctors that they shouldn't exercise because they're diagnosed with atrial fibrillation and because it may trigger an episode of atrial fibrillation. And although some of that is true, exercise can induce atrial fibrillation in, in some patients. However, long term, healthy living, including exercise, is an important part of the management of your atrial fibrillation. Now, the only time that I tell patients to not exercise or have atrial fibrillation is perhaps when they're first diagnosed with the condition, such as you just were diagnosed, you were in the hospital, you just got out of the hospital. It may not be the best time to start an exercise program at that time. However, once your condition is stable, one, whether that be with medical therapy or with procedures, I often encourage my patients to begin exercise programs. Now, patients when they get told that they should start exercising, they want to know how long should they exercise for? What types of exercises are safe? Are there certain heart rates that they should avoid? And the problem with that is that there is no clear guideline recommendation to say what types of exercises you should do or what heart rate or goal heart rate you should have. Because many patients are very variable and people have different levels of fitness. So one person's guideline may not be applicable, applicable to another person. Um, so all the exercises that people like to do, whether that is walking, jogging, running, swimming, weight training, uh, there's really no limitations on what somebody can do who has atrial fibrillation. However, when, especially when you're first starting off, there are some important guidelines to remember. Uh, if you're first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation and your doctor has said it's okay to start exercising, always start off slow. You know, don't expect to do uh, an hour of fitness, heavy intensity fitness, the first time you do any exercise after you've been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. Start off slow, may only be five to ten minutes, but build up as you feel that your body can, can do so. And always listen, listen to your body as well. If you're feeling tired, short of breath, dizzy, that's your body telling you to stop. But as you continue to exercise, you may be able to build up and be able to do more. Uh, I have found many patients who have, of mine who use uh, heart rate trackers while they exercise. Um, they, many of my patients either use a Fitbit or an Apple Watch to track their heart rate while they're exercising. And they want a guideline that says, okay, don't let your heart rate exercise faster than 160 or 180 beats per minute, for example. Uh, but again, there's no clear uh, guideline about what number is okay and what number is not okay while you're exercising. Again, listen to your body. Um, if you're feeling short of breath or dizzy, uh, you may need to uh, slow down or cut back on how much you are exercising, okay? When people are first diagnosed, it may actually be beneficial to them to do a more supervised uh, physical therapy such as cardiac rehab where, where you can have your heart rate monitored and you can get a better gauge of what your own personal limitations are when you start exercising on your own. But in general, exercise is healthy for you. It is good for patients who have atrial fibrillation because it may improve your high blood pressure, your diabetes. It may improve your weight as well, which are all important factors for managing your atrial fibrillation. So again, I, as a long term, I do emphasize and allow my patients to exercise with just some guidelines to listen to your body, uh, know when to stop when you're feeling tired or short of breath or dizzy, but progress and do as much as you feel that you're able to do. Thank you for visiting this video segment of Dr. Afib. I'll see you next time.